Transferring manual control to transport. Ready to execute jump. Godspeed. To you both. All right, Jack. FTL engaged. See you in a tick. Jumping in three, two. somewhat of an expert when it comes to temporal displacement. Though for my own part, I must say the physical method of time travel is significantly more... turbulent. God. Look at this place. This is the correct location, but is it the right time? I think he was talking to you there, Apollo. Cross-referencing astrometric positional data. Stand by. Confirmed. We have arrived just prior to the Ithaca's approach. I think I see her. There. That bright dot just off rail. Jack, you see that? Affirmative. I see it. The vessel is closing fast. We have limited time. Then let's not waste any more of it. The transport's good to go? I'm still running diagnostics, but so far everything appears to be in working order. Well, that'll have to do. We're on the clock. Very well. Plotting a course for the Astraeus primary drive bay. Popcorn? You're staying out here. See if you can find me a way to contact the Ithaca. Local comms just aren't going to cut it. We need a way to boost the signal. Uh, none of that. I promise, as soon as we've finished hooking up the cure bomb, we'll come find you. Now go. Course laid in. Transport rig prepped for departure. I would advise you both hold on. Stand by for primary thruster burn. Three, two, one. Transport underway. Distance to primary drive exchange, 4,600 meters. That's quite a sight. I should warn you, much of the Astraea remains highly irradiated. The transport's radiation dampener will shield us, but its range is limited. I advise you remain close to the rig at all times. Especially you, Captain Lewis. Dear clear of the session of Got it. Good safety tip. Once we reach the drive bay, we'll need to connect the fuel cell directly into the Astraea's drive exchange conduit. That should amplify the counterpulse sufficiently enough to eliminate all the biomass in the sector. You ready for this, Jack? You're asking me if I'm ready to venture into the burning wreckage of a destroyed warship overrun with the most toxic and destructive life form mankind has ever encountered? More or less. Yeah. Sounds like fun. I'm starting to think that I've been a bit of a terrible influence on you. You're only just now coming to this realization? Oh, shut up. Approaching the Astraea's outer hull. Brace for deceleration. Better hold on to something. via a surface tunnel just beyond these doors. How do we get them open? I'll need direct access to the local systems. There should be a control station just on the other side of that nearby airlock. Right, let's go. Perhaps those of us with reboot abilities should proceed first. By all means, lead on. How does this area 
still have power. There are multiple redundancies in place to protect the engineering deck from power failure, even in the event of catastrophic structural damage. As you can see... Good news for us. Not entirely. If the local power grid is still active, that means the biomass is as well. Couldn't let me have just one bright spot, could you? station is just up ahead. No sign of any significant biomass activity. How long do you suppose that will last? Based on previous experience, probably not as long as we'd prefer. Are those the door controls? Affirmative. They must have suffered some form of mechanical failure. Yeah, I think so, do you? Try the emergency release. You'll have to cut your way in. Copy. Locking mechanisms released. Doors open. Area clear. No biomass presence. This is it. Jack, I'll need your help to overwrite the local protocols. There's an AI core installed in the upper terminal. Remove it and place it in the overwrite slot. Copy that. Your new data scanner should still be compatible with the Astraeus technology. Once the core is core secured, data port open. Commencing upload. Overwrite complete. Once you return the core to the upper terminal, I should have full access to all local systems. Core locked in. Access achieved. I have local control. Now all I need is the captain's authorization. Right. This is acting Captain Olivia Rhodes. Uh, open the doors. Authorization accepted. Disabling security measures. Doors opening. Stand by. I'm moving the rig inside. Right, come on, Jack. Let's get back out to the transport and... Captain. What is it? I'm reading movement. Shit. Multiple biomass signatures closing on the transport. NAVCOM is failing. I can't pilot the transport with those ticks draining its systems. I can clear them off. Stand by. Use the secondary airlock beyond the control station. It's your quickest route to the transport. Got it. We're on our way. Negative, Captain. You will need to remain inside. The transport is too far out. You would die in seconds. Right. Plenty of loving radiation. If you die, our mission fails. Your concern for my well-being is extremely touching. You're welcome. Airlock controls should already be active. Cycling airlock. Stand by. Might want to ready that counter pulse gadget of yours, Jack. Affirmative. I'll signal you when it's all clear. I'm gonna just back up a bit here. Good luck. I count three tick forms on the transport jack. You'll need to neutralize all of them in order for me to regain control. Acknowledged. That's one. That's two. That should be all of them. Apollo, can you confirm? Confirmed. Transport power flow nominal. I've regained operational control. Make sure you pull up nice and close. I prefer my insides remain unliquefied. Not to worry, Captain. You'll be well within the dampener's radius. There. That should be more than sufficient for the captain to safely board. Live. 
You are clear to exit. Copy that. That's the last of them.
reducing speed. The primary drive bay is just beyond these doors. Alright, let's get them open. There's an airlock nearby that will take you to the control station. I see it. I'll proceed first. Right behind you. Radiological interference from the Estrella is disrupting our local comms. We should be able to re-establish contact once we're clear of the wreckage. are still registering as functional. You're thinking we could use them to evacuate once we finish the catalyst. Well, that is what they're here for. And um, anything's better than having to backtrack through that mess of tunnels. Very well. Once we've finished installing the catalyst, we'll use the escape pods to get clear of the wreckage. For now, let's proceed to the control station. Biomass from the drive bay has spread to the door controls. What about the emergency? There is considerable buildup around the panel, but it looks to still be accessible. I'll take a look. You could use your counterpulse emitter to nullify any threat from the biomass. The infestation is fairly severe, but I think I can still reach the panel. Got it. Opening door. Through here. step is to rewrite the local protocols. The procedure is identical to the one we performed earlier. Where's the AI core? It's not in the terminal. One of the engineers must have removed it during the initial outbreak, an attempt to seal the drive bay. It's likely the core is still close by. We should search the adjoining rooms. Expect considerable biomass presence. You go, I'll keep an eye on the transport. I won't be long. Nicely done. We're sure the core's in good shape, 
We'll know for certain once Jack places it in the override slot. Or in place. Data port is open. Commencing data transfer. Override successful. Copy. Returning core to upper terminal. Core locked in. Protocol remapping successful. Local access granted. I can now open the drive bay. On your authorization, Captain. Right. This is acting Captain Anivia Rhodes. Open the drive bay. Authorization accepted. Security measures lifted. Remarkable. The biomass has all but overtaken the chamber. It's overriding the existing environment, building a new ecosystem. The infestation is worse than I anticipated. This is what happens to Earth. More accurately, what will happen if we fail to accomplish our mission? All right. All right. We've got a job to do. So, let's get to it. Captain. I'm afraid, given the state of the drive bay, I cannot allow you to accompany us inside. What? No. I'm staying. I'm with you. As much as I would welcome your assistance, I don't think that is an option. Jack is right, Captain. If these new readings are any indication, the drive bay is far too dangerous an environment for a human being. The odds of your survival are close to zero. That is not an exaggeration. Right. Well, I suppose as far as arguments go, that's not the worst. Okay. Okay, new plan. I'm going to track down Popcorn, see if we can work out a way to make contact with the Ithaca. The escape pods are good to go, follow? Affirmative. I've already plotted the coordinates. Simply climb inside and seal the canopy. Good. Keep this comm channel open. I don't care if the signal gets spotty. I want constant communication. Understood. Come on, let's get you back to the airlock. I'll be right behind you. Yeah, you better head.
exchange conduit appears to have been cut off. The conduit must be fully powered if we are to sufficiently amplify the counterpulse blast wave. What are our options? Our best course of action is to try and reroute power from another system. Then let's do it. There's a junction nearby that should still be functional. Adjusting course. Hold on. Liv, we've run into a power flow issue. We have to briefly divert course. Do what you have to do, but do it fast. The Ithaca fleet is getting close. I make out at least three more ships in the distance. How close are we to making contact? So working on it. It's just not that much to work with. If I could maybe find one of our old geo sensors, I, I could find the Liv. Might be enough to get a signal out. Liv, you're breaking up. Liv. Interference from the Astraea is disrupting the signal. Is there any way to get her back? I'm afraid there's not much I can do. However, the captain is actively working on boosting the comm signal to reach the Ithaca. If she succeeds, it's possible we'll be able to re-establish contact. Understood. This is it. These junction controls should allow you to divert power to the exchange conduit. Understood. Stand by. Power flow takes on approach. Let's get back to rerouting the power. Returning to junction. Power rerouted. The exchange conduit is operating at maximum capacity. Well done. Return to the transport and we'll proceed onward. We'll 
need to connect the catalyst to one of the conduit's fuel cell housings. This will allow the device to trigger a cascading reaction that will amplify the blast radius enough to eliminate all the biomass in this sector. Does it matter which housing we use? We should start by identifying which housings are still operational. Look for any housings with a working data port and call them out. Got it. Negative on this housing. Agreed. What about housing B3? Negative. There's too much biomass clogging the mechanism. All right, let's move on. I think we can safely rule out this housing as well. I concur. I'll circle the conduit so we can inspect the remaining housings. Housing D4 might still be salvageable. Biomass presence is moderate, but still enough to be a problem. Significant biomass presence. Housing is unusable. I agree. Housing C1 still appears functional. Unfortunately, biomass presence around the couplings is too severe. Copy. Let's keep looking. Rampant infestation. Housing appears inoperable. A valid assessment. Resuming flight path. The housing's data port is defective. Nothing to be done here. Agreed. We seem to be running out of options. There are still housings left to inspect. Let's keep looking. What about this housing? E3. I'm afraid not. The infection appears to have penetrated the outer casing. The internal components are likely teeming with biomass. This housing is far too infested. There's nothing we can do here. Yes, I'd have to agree. Excessive biomass presence. Valid assessment. Housing is no longer functional. Continuing orbit. The housing looks clear, but the data port is unsalvageable. Unfortunate. The housing might have otherwise been a suitable candidate. There. Housing G4. That looks to be our best option. Data port is functional. No visible infestation. I agree. That housing does appear to be our most optimal solution. Well spotted. All other housings appear either offline or infected. I believe this is our only chance. Can you bring us within depth range? Affirmative. Maneuvering thrusters engaged. Signal. Live. Her signal's only getting worse.
place. Now use the same controls as before to secure the device. Apollo, what's happening? The power clamp's anode coupling failed to engage. Without a proper connection to the conduit, we won't be able to trigger the reaction we need to detonate. Can the coupling be repaired? Unknown. We'll need to get a closer look. Copy. Moving to inspect. There is a small pocket of biomass here. That is disconcerting. We should nullify that infestation immediately. Understood. Infection neutralized. We should probably clear the remains. The nodule is small enough that you should be able to burn it away with your cutter. Biomass removed. What about now, Apollo? Can you engage the coupling? Negative. The damage is too extensive. With the coupling disabled, we have no way to bridge the connection. Then we find a new solution. We have to. The ethic is almost here. What if I use my shell to complete the connection? If I hold both the anode and the coupling, the current should pass straight through. Yes, but once the circuit goes live, the resulting energy surge would destroy your shell. Then I'll simply reboot. At this range, the counterpulse wave will undoubtedly disable the transport's fabricator. You would be unable to reboot. Are there any alternatives? We could try using the fabricator to construct something to bridge the gap. Though without access to the full archive of schematics, our options are exceedingly limited. Give me a moment to locate and print the most tenable option. Fabrication complete. The component is ready. Try positioning it such that it makes contact with both the anode and the coupling. myself. I am sorry to say it, but I must concur. What do I need to do? Stand by while I prep the catalyst for diffusion. Jack, would you like to try contacting Captain Rhodes again? If it's at all possible, yes. I should say goodbye. I will boost the signal as best I can. Liv. Liv, do you copy? Jack! Jack, are you there? I'm here. I read you, Liv. Jack! Thank God. I thought I'd lost you. Liv, there's a problem. What do you mean? What sort of problem? There's a malfunction. I'll have to use my own shell to complete the connection and detonate the device. What? Jack, no! You can't! The EM surge will fry the fabricator. I won't be able to reboot! I understand. You could die! Jack, wait! Just, just hold on. Uh, let me see if I can find another way for you to reboot. Or one of your old activation pods. Something! Liv. It's alright. I know what I'm doing. No! God damn it, Jack! Listen to me! You are not doing this! I apologize for disobeying orders, Captain. Jack! No! But there is no other option. Jack! Please! Circuit is now going live. Understood. No! No! Wait! Don't! There's still time! I can fix this! Jack! Goodbye, Olivia. Jack! I...
sunshine. <laughs> Everything's gonna be all right, Jack. Captain Rhodes. Captain Rhodes, this is Ithaca Archwell. Do you have the Echo Unit? Say again, Ithaca. I said, do you have him? That's affirmative, Ithaca. I have him. Stand by for rescue. Come on, Jack. It's okay. I've got you. <laughs> 